I am that mover Sita. The end is nearing, but they will not go quickly. That pretty much sums up what is going to happen in this one. We start this with Gone with a Simple Smile, where we see this from Thais's perspective. In fact, it was her diary, where she was dealing with an abnormality that had half a visible cat face. Ah, so a twisted take on the Cheshire Cat. Yes, another twisted take on the Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Anyone thinking that Lewis Carroll is spinning in his grave? Anyway. The Cheshire Cat was a cat that spoke in riddles and could appear and disappear at will. Gone with a simple smile, then proceeded to go into Tai and take her E.J. sword, knowing that it was there. Tai then tripped up and fell on the floor. She picked herself up and went after that unruly feather. She then felt disoriented, feeling like she was under psychological attack. Her E.J. was stolen. Apparently, this abnormality breached. She searched for this abnormality, yet she didn't feel scared. It wasn't because she wasn't weak anymore, nor was it due to a low threat level of this abnormality. It was because of a strange sense of nostalgia and familiarity. She found this on the pipe, but, well... Apparently it didn't stand, or rather, float still. As if it was training her like a mouse. Yes, a mouse. She caught it, and then it offered her the EGO back. But it turned out it was taking the <laughs> It was doing this as it was bored. Tai understood that it didn't do this for no reason. He wants to be pals with them. Didn't it? Asking why she did that. Rather said that. Then she saw it was gone with a smile. It disappeared and she couldn't find any information on it. She thought that it was the weirdest thing that happened that day. And then... The white nights and dark days happened. Yeah. It's day 50 within the facility. The 10 years, from the outside perspective, had come to an end. And the seed of light was released on the city. Yes. It was seen as a pillar of light that shone brightly as if the whole world was illuminated for three days. Then something was odd. Everyone smiled. Whether it was in the back streets, the company, the wing, they all felt the same thing. Atai felt happiness, relief. She didn't feel the sorrow and distress that she felt previously. She enjoyed the pleasing calmness, but she was not joyful. Then Flower came to her and told her that Sasha told Flower to give an EGO to Tai. Tai asked what the department heads were up to. They were all in a meeting as something happened in HQ, something super important. Ah, likely it was. A hostile takeover by Angela. Well, 
It's possible they might not know the details of what happened there, but... Let's just say that the Bosman Corporation will be no more by the time this week is over. Meanwhile, the light was being spread. All were smiling, all except Tai and Flower. Tai put the EGO in her suitcase, fully understanding that getting fired will be the least of her worries if she got caught smuggling that out. But she had to take it with her. She asked what they wanted her to have and why. Then, after day three of the White Nights, the Dark Days came. They didn't know who did this, but when the Dark came, she didn't feel the positive feelings. She was unsure of what happened, due to the spreading lights and shadow, but she felt despair, misery, and grief, much greater than the happiness that the light brought. She couldn't feel anything, or think of anything, except cats. She didn't show up once during the time of the light. She didn't notice this. And then, she had to find cats. It was the only thing that was meaningful to her at that point. We now move on to Party Everlasting. Kat was in her room in the dormitory. She said, Give her heart, a strong-hearted will. Despite not knowing what a strong-hearted will was, she believed that she became stronger by abandoning her heart. But she couldn't abandon anything or become stronger. She didn't have the answer. She then found herself in front of the elevator. Asking what it wished for. She walked in and decided that she should have done this long ago. What she was doing now. Playing. She pressed the button and then went up to the top of the building. She was thinking, toss away and pick up, pass away and be born, toss away and be born, pass away and pick up. As the dark remained, with the only light coming from the elevator, she used her golden ladle to smash the door open. Then she met Manuel, the AI hologram patent on Angela who greeted the dear manager to branch O-5681 of the Bottom Corporation. The manager, who was long dead, likely due to a tranquilizer overdose, due to the blood stain near the mouth, likely coughing it up. Much to catch shock, then Manuel replayed the manager's words that their beloved angel and space exclusive to both. They found comfort and smiled there, despite the madness and wrath. Her smile and voice glistened in their hearts, but they were still lonely. Wanting her to call them by name, instead of manager, to touch her and to look her in the eye. Manuel then played the conversation the previous day. Or at least the last day that the manager was still alive. That they told her that they didn't care about the company or the wings. They wanted to leave that room with her. She then gave them 
an answer. The answer being... Wellis Greetings Manager, welcome to Branch O-5681, with her eyes opening, as in the way that Angela would act when she wanted to mess with people's heads. The manager said that she became a mere manual again. The angel that they'd leaned on and loved was no more. They couldn't bear it anymore, hoping that her soul awaits them where they're going, finishing with farewell, my angel. And likely after that, gave themselves a tranquilizer overdose. Cat wished that the deaths and sorrows of the agents within that branch would yield a better result of some kind. That something was done by the human heart. Then her psychotic smirk returned as she snapped saying that the heart was doomed to wither. It was doomed to twist and distort. Oh. I think we can guess what's coming next, don't we? Then Manuel bowed as he The screens were going funny. She said that Manuel's voice was so beautiful, it was sunshine. Then we see that Cat was sprouting two extra legs. Meanwhile, Tai continued to search for Cat, which was the only thought in her mind in that darkness. That darkness which would, unknown to everyone, last four days. She grabbed the suitcase containing the EGO and opened the door. It was dark outside, darker than the darkness that she was already familiar with before the white nights and dark days. The lights were out. The residents of the nest were seemingly trapped in their homes. The blood was on the back streets and it could be smelled. In fact, it smelled as if the back streets were encroaching on the nest. The pain and agony resumed, yet she kept walking, steps without feeling fear, hesitating, or anything. Then she arrived at the branch. She reported for work. Then she noticed that there weren't any employees on the ground floor. Those underground were trapped. And just as she was about to press the elevator button to go down, an explosion occurred, sending the door and parts of the building flying. Then she got up and was met with a four-legged being wearing a blue dress with upside-down hearts over it. With a clock behind her head with a blonde long hairstyle covering the face. And a white rabbit under her. Tai didn't know how an abnormality could get there. Then the rabbit created a hole which made Tai drop down. As she was falling, the rabbit, who was likely a mix of the white rabbit and the March Hare, since it was white and said the party had begun, told everyone to come on out and do the tail-catching dance. Meanwhile, an agent was hiding in a partially ruined floor, worried that it was where they'd meet their end. Lights 
dark. They just wanted to go home. Wanting to die there instead. If it's their end. Unfortunately. White Lake breached containment. Much to the horror of that agent. Back on the surface, Bibi told Suho to scan what Tai had encountered, as there was no abnormality on file in that branch, telling her to hurry and compare Enkephalin readings. Unfortunately, Suho couldn't detect any from it, much to Bibi's confusion, believing the device to be broken. It wasn't. The readings were at zero. It's not an abnormality as they knew it. Yeah, you're right, Zuhano. It's a distortion. One made from cats when she gave up on herself. When the emotions were building within her. Yes. Building within her and it was too much for her. She was one of the first to appear, due to the white nights and dark days. Yes, the first known distortion. There will be others. Bibi asked what they were supposed to call that, not knowing this. But then this distortion, ready two of its legs to stomp on Bibi. But Dahl came with the Broken Lantern to assist, along with Toma, Raza, and Purin. Bebe was relieved to see them, but that relief was short-lived as the road home and Scaredy Cat was nearby. The captains fought against both, along with the Red Queen that had only recently turned up. Bibe asking how Dal got there. They were making their way out with all that they could find on the way. Then they heard her voice and went to assist her. Toma and Purin having some in-battle banter, while Razar told them to shut up and stay focused. The road home acting strangely, not speaking her usual dialogue, saying, Let us dance, friends! Catch tails! Catch tails! The Red Queen saying, A party everlasting. Yeah. You're probably asking, where's the even more twisted version of the Mad Hatter? It's possible that's what Cat is now. The distortion known as the party everlasting. A mix of Alice and the Mad Hatter. The abnormalities apparently being drawn to Kat, or what's left of her anyway. As there appears to be not, well, not that much. As she's unable to speak, never mind understand them, at least at that point. Suho threw the device that detects in Kefalin away. More or less saying, this, and told Bibi to ensure the security of everyone, telling Razar that the information team would disband as of that moment and that they should follow Bibi's orders. Razar was shocked by this statement. Bibi was shocked as well, as there's no info. Was she trying to fight? She'll just die anyway. Suho then stated that it would hit, well, be her final inquiry. She always admired and looked up to the things that would break her, arrogantly dissecting them, the purpose that suited her well. Further briefing would be a waste of time, telling Bebe to do what she needed to. She was ready to attack the abnormalities and the distorted version of cats. Let's call this one a party of everlasting. Well, certainly fitting, considering what's happening. This would be a most curious inquiry. Raza was going to defy that order. Toma wasn't sure what he was going to do. 
Razar was going to assist Suho, telling the others to head up. Bibe telling them to guide her to where the others are. Zaja was in a field of flowers made by the steamed rose, as the hookah butterfly was approaching. She saw it as vengeance. He couldn't complain. He accepted it without resistance. Then Joe sliced through it, much to his surprise. Joe getting a call from Bebe. They were evacuating survivors. They had to go and help them. Sasha believing it to be the end. The force made Joe's heart drop. As for Sasha, it felt strange. But it made him happy. To think that he'll face his last moments with his dearest. It brought him joy. Ah, so they're like that of each other. Anyway, Joe saw that a strange but reassuring. Then Daisy appeared to assist with this. By shooting at the hookah butterfly. Butting in to another moment between them. Despite that, Joe thought it was good to have her there. Sasha wanted her to leave a will. Irritated at her interrupting them. She then remembered her early days with them, where they were her mentors in the same black suits. It was funny to her that they tried to teach her every little thing. She thanked her dear seniors for everything and asked if they shall clear up the trash as usual. They then did a combined effort against both the steamed rose and the hookah butterfly. Knowing that they don't have a chance of successfully suppressing all of them. But they knew that they could slow them down long enough to give all those that can get out of their escape. Meanwhile, Kat, the party everlasting, along with her white rabbit's companion, which might represent her heart, which was outside of her, as far as she was concerned. Along with the penitent girl, the road home, the blue smock shepherd, the reddened buddy, Dingle Dangle, the drowned sisters, the servant of Ruff, White Lake, Pisky Mermaid, the hookah butterfly, the steamed rose, Pygmalion, the bottle of tears, Tangle, and the Red Queen were all playing this game that she was making them play, where they were dancing and catching tails. In another part of the facility, Ella was facing a different abnormality. Finn told her to get out as her EGO was at its limits, much as his was. Thankfully, she was a good listener and got out in time. That abnormality of the pale, damaging canes that consisted of a bunch of floating cyan tiles wouldn't move, deciding to make that hall its lair. Flower was worried that all the people died and those that didn't, it wouldn't be any better for them. This made her burst into tears. Finn said, cry all you like. They were going to die, so they might as well let it all out. Unpack their feelings so they don't carry their regrets to the grave. Flower was so upset, she couldn't put it into words. Ella didn't know what to think about that, but she said that she didn't hunger for money or life in the nest. Well, if she didn't, She'd have stuck to writing and lived a happier life compared to dying underground. But it was nice to meet good folks like the good-hearted Flower and Finn. Finn being a sloppy, grumpy hothead that she was glad to know. Well, you certainly have interesting choices in company. 
he was glad too. Then Finn noticed that there was a person in the hall. Finn helped Flower up to the viewing ports, as she was too short to see herself. It was Tai, wearing the stained rose Ijo suit. An Ijo suit that was made at the cost of Rose's life. The abnormalities knowing her as the peasant from before. Tai recognized the distortion before her as Cat, asking if she recognized her or even the color of the EGO she was wearing. Then we saw an eye coming from the overgrown locks of the distorted version of Cat. The others were observing this, saying she was right, abandoning her heart and indulging in dance, recovering it, and shedding tears was how she survived. and lived in that strange, strange wonderland. She was right about everything. Kat saw the mind as fated to the storms. The only thing she had got twisted. She saw a noble mind lasted a lifetime. Plus, what she lost once, lost again, and ultimately rejected all. Those now they party, wondrous and everlasting revealing the bow over her eyes as she revealed a cake. <clears throat> yes, a cake with candles. Tai told her that nothing lasts forever. The universe, the light and dark, everything comes to an end. She then revealed the Ichio weapon of the Stink Rose which made her suit turn blue, intending to end that pass and finish that dance. They will save her. She dodged the arrows that were sent flying, the arrows that was behind the cats, and deflected them, while using the whip that she was wielding which was also a sword to bind Kat, to constrict her and cause her to bleed from the neck. And then she charged at her, the Ijo weapon turning into a wrist blade as she aimed for the head. She then tore through the party everlasting distortion and tore Kat out of it to the scattering of blue petals. Yes, she did that after thrusting through the distortion form. Tai thought that the heart wasn't in the wrong. That's what she wanted to prove, so she'd show it, even if trampled, snapped, broken. She'll stand and speak that they weren't in the wrong, that in that place, they did what they could to live with all their hearts, to someday unravel what was twisted. Tai was thinking of Rose, and Kat woke up as a human. After crashing to the partially flooded pink water, she saw Kat standing up, looking away from her, or at least what she thought was her as a human. Unfortunately, this turned out to be temporary, as she quickly distorted back to her previous form. Did she see herself as beyond redemption, not ready to accept what happened? Well, regardless, the White Rabbit continued, counting one, two, three, as a sinkhole appeared and she was swallowed into it. The white rabbit told her 
that she wouldn't forget her name. As cats, the white rabbits, and all the distortions, including My Sweet Home, were sucked in with her. Tai told Kat not to go, to please wait. Then she saw Ella, Flower, and Finn on the other side of the containment unit. It was a hard decision, but she decided to save them, as she was dangling from her EGO whip form. Meanwhile, Bebe tunneled up with her Ijo drill, telling them to climb up carefully, as the hole could collapse inwards. Even though it's still open now. Period intended to put himself in danger for the others. As while he tended to the members of his team, he lost an arm helping them to escape. Toma saw Finn and Ella assisted in climbing up by Tai. Toma being annoyed by Finn not remembering his name. Then Flower was helped up from the ruins. Tai seeing that it was good that so many survived. Flower saw the world that they used to know was down there. Gone like dreams. Good, bad, all of them. Tai contemplated this as she thought of those that died during those recent times as the dark days ended. Rose, Joe, Sasha, Suho, Raza, along with all the others. Sometime after this, they moved to the back streets, as the nest was no longer safe. That and they were unemployed, so they decided to become fixers. Ella asking if Finn could use his workshop device or whatever he made was called. Finn replied that he only got to make one so he didn't have it. Even so, what were they going to do with it? Asking if his machine was some kind of magic wand that waves away their troubles. Does he look like a fairy? No. Certainly not the kind that the Arbiters use. Oh yes, and Ella was wearing glasses at this time. <sighs> do you really think that would work as a disguise? It certainly didn't work with Superman. Well, not for those outside of that universe. Anyway, Arbiter or not, let's move on. Ella pointed out where this was. The Bloom Office. the opening hours being between 3am and 10pm. An open shelter in case of emergency, solving all kinds of requests. Flower, dressing like something out of magical girl anime. Except without the dangers, welcomed Ella and Finn, asking if she was comfortable working in a proper place. Apparently going out on the streets wasn't scary with Finn's device. Finn was working in a workshop learning to make finer stuff. Flower was sorting the request documents. Flower being the oper <coughs> sorry, office operative. She was well prepared for that. As for the yellow filing cabinets, that was for the distortion detection. Yes, there was a famous one by that time. Then Tai brought in food supplies, telling her that she wasn't a detective. She was a fixer. That didn't bother her. Finn asked what grade she was, as he was holding a request for a lost cat. Oh, that's one. 
she wasn't sure, like the great nine, as they've only just started. Flower asked how the building looks. Tai thought it was good. Flower had Finn and Ella meet just on time, which was good too. As for the ruin that Tai explored, the ruin that used to be their former workplace, it was good. Cat wasn't there though. Finn pointed out that even if she was found, she might not be able to be human again. Ella had heard of all sorts of canards, but none about distortions coming back. Tai told them that they should tell them that direction to get them to throw a fit with a spooky face, telling them to imagine the kicks. Ella was surprised how long Cass was quiet. Finn was remarking that Cass will be furious that she's talking her and might come up for her. Flower would always be by Tai's side. She then thought of how everything had an end. Those buried in the ground without anyone to remember them. People and stories, even when someone perishes or vanishes, their traces will forever remain, in someone or somewhere. She would find them and restore them. And the story concludes with Tai joyfully descending to Wonderland again. Or rather, the twisted Wonderland created by Cat, the party everlasting in search of her. There are certain details that I couldn't mention before, due to them being known after the release of Wonder Lab's final episode. I'll cover that in the final video in the series. Until next time. Hail the rabbits! <laughs>